So in this time of New Year's resolutions and recovering from the sugar coma that was the holidays, this seems like an appropriate time to discuss why sugar is bad for you. In part one of this sugar series, we talked about the basics. What is sugar and how does your body use it? That might be some helpful context for this video. So if you want to click up here and go watch that, you can do that now. And then come back to this one. I'll just, I'll wait here. Last time, you'll remember that we said that there are lots of kinds of sugar, but glucose is the only kind of sugar that our bodies can use for energy. The problem arises when foods contain more fructose than glucose. Fructose is naturally found in many foods, including, you guessed it, fruit, but not really in large enough amounts to cause any severe problems. The real issue is with processed foods and refined sugar, like high fructose corn syrup. It's in the name. And even in natural liquid sugars, like agave and honey. Dude, I thought those were the good guys? No? Yeah. These kinds of sugars are like 98% fructose and 2% glucose, which means that your body doesn't even really get that much energy and it's exposed to way too much fructose in way too short a time. Fructose is mainly processed by your liver and when your liver breaks down that fructose, it produces something called triglycerides, which are a blood soluble fat. Eat too much fructose and it just gets turned into fat that sticks to your liver and goes out floating into your bloodstream, putting you at really high risk of heart disease. Excess fructose can also lead to insulin resistance. In the last video, we talked about how insulin helps your body use the glucose in your bloodstream for energy, but too much sugar consumption leads to the insulin equivalent of alcohol tolerance. If you're a heavy drinker, it slowly takes more and more alcohol to get you drunk. And if you're a sugar junkie, it'll slowly take your body more and more insulin for it to have its desired effect, which often leads to chronic metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. The problem is that this kind of processed, useless, addictive sugar is in everything. In ketchup, cereal, granola bars, sauces, alcohol, pre-prepared and canned foods. Every kind of drink that isn't water. And it feels like it's impossible to escape it. And you want to know why it's in everything? And brands love to use it? Because it's cheap and it's addictive. I wasn't joking before when I used the term sugar junkie. Sugar consumption can become an actual addiction. Eating any kind of sugar lights up the same pleasure and reward centers as cocaine and heroin. It sucks because our brains are evolutionarily programmed to have that addiction circuit for sugar. Back in our hunter-gatherer days, eating that fructose and storing the resulting fat could result in the difference between life and death when winter came. This is the same reason why bears look for honey and blueberry in the summer. It's to build up as much fat as possible to get them through hibernation in the winter. So handily, our brains are still addicted to sugar, but we live in a world where we have, you know, like indoor heating and down jackets and where fructose is all around us all the time and your body's craving. Even if you're like super freaking lucky and have a really fast metabolism and therefore don't feel the weight gain side effects of excess fructose consumption, it's probably unfortunately still wreaking havoc on your body in other ways, mainly through your endocrine system or the one that regulates hormones, among other things. When your body releases insulin, it also releases cortisol. This is to make sure that your blood sugar doesn't drop too low as insulin is doing its job. Cortisol is a steroid hormone that has many and complex functions within your body, but one of its jobs is to make sure that your thyroid is functioning properly. In diets that are high High in refined carbs, the huge peaks and crashes in insulin are also linked to huge peaks and crashes in cortisol, and that hormonal roller coaster increases your risk of mood disorder and thyroid dysfunction. Your thyroid plays several roles in the essential job of keeping you alive, but it also helps regulate your mood, energy levels, and weight. Now, all of these things that I've discussed so far will have some effect on your sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone. If your body isn't producing and processing these at the proper rates, then you get, yet again, mood issues, changes in your period or menopausal symptoms, skin issues, immune system suppression, as well as weight and energy fluctuation. Also, sugar rots your teeth, but I think we probably all knew that one anyway. Sugar is like actually poisoning us. People who consume 25% of their daily calories or more as sugar, which is really easy to do when you're drinking sugar drinks like soda, are more than twice as likely to die than people who consume less sugar. And that's just from heart disease. It's an epidemic and one that disproportionately affects disenfranchised populations, but that's something we're gonna talk about in part three. If you wanna learn more about sugar's effects on the body, I highly recommend watching the documentary called Fed Up, which is actually available to watch in full on YouTube. And don't let all this info get you down either. We do have the power to change this, even if it's really hard, really hard. And sugar isn't all bad, especially naturally occurring glucose, and everything in moderation really is part of a healthy diet. So like this video and subscribe to this channel to catch those videos right when they come out and for a new video every week. Go ahead and leave me your thoughts on your relationship with sugar down in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.